Late last month, a city in China with an urban and metropolitan area population akin to New York City went on lockdown. The world collectively hoped that this sickness would be contained. Two weeks ago, you had written about how things were not as they seemed. There was cognitive dissonance all around you, called for a pullback. Investors suddenly woke up this week, it seemed like, in the U.S. to the reality of the coronavirus, and pretty much we got a straight line to a correction. Is a bear market inevitable at this point, and how quickly do we get there? Well, it's a great question, Scarlett. Uh, I don't think it's inevitable necessarily. You know, I've had the opinion that we should stop out with the S&P somewhere between 3,000, 3,100, which is what we did today. Uh, you know, we need to take a breather here, get some perspective. Uh, but, you know, as the data keeps coming in, um, you know, as I've said to some people, uh, an epidemic is when your neighbor has the illness. A pandemic is when you have the illness. And so the illness has really not come to the United States yet. But if this really turns into uh, an epidemic in the United States, then I think we have a, a lot more downside. How, you know, thinking about uh, market risk, there seems to be two things that make this particularly different than anything we've seen lately. One of them is just the ex sort of extreme levels of uncertainty. Right. It's really hard to model something like this, especially when so much human behavior is involved. And second of all, we've had other periods of volatility. They can usually be addressed be via a rate cut or right. something like that. I mean, you know, China <clears throat> devalued the currency 2% at the end of 2015. Still a little stimulus and sort of rebalance things. A rate cut may, in theory, help, but this is not really a monetary phenomenon no, at all. not at all. I mean, I think the, the Fed is fairly impotent in this environment. Uh, you know, when you look at, you know, people keep talking about this demand shock and, you know, will we have a demand shock? Or, no, I'm sorry, there is no demand shock, it's a supply shock. Well, come on, hotels in New York are empty. Yeah. Airlines, you know, people are not traveling. It's a demand shock also. So, and lowering, you know, interest rates isn't going to encourage somebody to taking a risk right. of getting the, uh, the virus. But, you know, one thing, Joe, I'll tell you that I've not said to anybody else in public, uh, yeah. <clears throat> this is possibly the worst thing I've ever seen in my career. Uh, and, you know, I've been through a lot. I've been through the stock market crash. Uh, in 87, uh, I went through the financial crisis. Uh, this has the potential to reel into something extremely serious. At what point did you have that realization? This morning. Why this morning? What happened overnight? What happened this morning? Um, when you start looking at the data that came in today, not yesterday's data, uh, but what we picked up overnight for increases in cases in Korea, uh, increases for cases in Italy, and, and now Spain, is becoming big. Uh, it, it's just, you know, it, it's very hard to imagine a scenario where you can actually contain this thing. And so, um, you know, that's the thing that is, uh, to me, very frightening. This week, the U.S. stock market suffered its fastest downward correction since the summer of 1933 in the heart of the then Great Depression. As concerns about a growing potential worldwide economic slowdown finally resulted in dramatically lower U.S. stock valuations. We also witnessed forced margin call selling similar to what we saw during the 2008 global financial crisis or like in this photo taken at the end of the 1929 stock market mania. Financial participants losing on leverage bets using currency on loan that was not theirs often had to sell or liquidate many long bets that may have actually been profitable. The selling of long bets often bleeds over into other asset classes, who, as a result, drop in price. Like within the derivative price-driven four precious metals, gold and silver futures contracts traded on the COMEX and platinum and palladium contracts traded on the NYMEX. Spot price beatings to close this week were seen across the board from silver to platinum and even with gold and palladium spot prices. The most recently best performing precious metals, gold and palladium, their Fiat Federal Reserve note prices held out much longer throughout this week's stock market carnage. While supposed commodity metal whipping boys, platinum and silver prices both bled consistently lower throughout the week. Hello, this is James Anderson with SD Bullion. Late last week on this channel, we released a video entitled, Gold Price Going to 2000 Per Ounce. What if stock bubble bursts? In that 10 minute video, we broke down how gold and silver performs during their secular bull markets while the U.S. stock market runs through major corrections or bear market crashes of over 50% at times. If you missed it, stay tuned to the end of this week's update and click through to see how silver and gold have performed during turbulent 
financial market crashes over the last 50 years or more. None of the facts of this spreading virus thus far, nor what we witnessed during this historic week, changed our minds regarding the medium and long-term view for the likely directions coming for U.S. stock market values measured by silver and gold bullion. But what happens if this illness continues spreading further than it already has? How many further travel lockdowns and economic slowdowns are to come? On the left side of this graphic, we can see flight traffic before the virus. And on the right side, we can see how few of flights were happening two weeks ago. Have a look at how Chinese car sales have been doing lately versus last year. Imagine not merely what the repercussions and knock-on effects of China's manufacturing lockdown will produce already, but if such lockdowns spread further throughout the global economy. Expectations for further car sales and economic activity are waning, and that is taking a heavy toll on precious commodity values. Ratios for what are likely the two best long-term bullion value buys at the moment have widened to historic heights. The gold-platinum ratio is now over 1.8, which is the highest that ratio has been in over 120 years of time. The gold-silver ratio touched levels as high as they were in the early 1990s, deep in the midst of the multi-decade post-1980 gold and silver bear markets. The following statement was released today, February 28, 2020, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern, by the private Federal Reserve Central Bank Chairman Jerome Powell. He states, the fundamentals of the U.S. economy remain strong. However, the coronavirus poses evolving risks to economic activity. The Federal Reserve is closely monitoring developments and their implications for the economic outlook. We will use our tools and act as appropriate to support the economy. Translation to most market onlookers, this means the Federal Reserve is most definitely going to continue to cut interest rates throughout the remainder of this year and likely further expand their $4 trillion fiat Fed note balance sheet beyond what they've done thus far with QE1, QE2, QE3, and New York Fed's not QE4 repo programs. It remains to be seen what new market interventions the Federal Reserve will conjure out of thin air, but this current global supply chain freezing and ongoing demand side depression does not appear to be something that central banks can simply print their way out of. But much like the spot price sell-offs for all four major precious metals in the fall of 2008, even with some further short-term precious metal price sell-offs to come, we can expect whatever interventions the Federal Reserve and other central banks commit to upcoming will have positive medium and long-term effects for precious metals valued by major stock market indexes or in further debasing government fiat currencies to come. That's all for this week. If you missed our update last week, Click through and see how gold and silver have performed versus stock market crashes in the last 50 years or more. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to give our video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to our channel, do that. And finally, be sure to hit the alert button so you don't miss these market updates as they come along. Give us your comments below. Let us know what topics you want to see more coverage on.